Good morning, peeps. Welcome to another vlog. Today, we're working on a kitchen sink. I'm actually gonna be cutting out a hole to fit this sink right here. We've already cut out the template, which comes with the box. And I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but there's a very faint line. So now that we've traced the template, what I'm gonna do is I have my trusty little vacuum right here. I have my jigsaw over here. I'm gonna first off bore a hole in the middle and then I'm gonna start cutting around and tracing that line basically with the jigsaw in order to make this fit the actual template for the sink itself. So we've got a lot of plumbing coming your way. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button and let's go do some delicious plumbing. got the hole cut looking pretty straight so far we're gonna do a bit more vacuuming and cleaning and then we're gonna start installing it let's go So I broke this down into two phases. The first phase was I wanted to bring all the tools necessary to get the sink in. Problem is, is that I have to bring a jigsaw, I gotta bring my hole saws, I gotta bring a bunch of batteries and, a, and extension cords just to get the sink in. And those aren't necessarily things that I use for the rest of the job. They take up a tremendous amount of space. So I did the first phase, which was got all the tools that I needed for this one specific thing. Now that I have the sink in, I'm gonna go ahead and take everything back that I I don't need anymore fill up my bag with all the materials that I do need and then come back and basically install everything there now something that I have to note is as you probably saw in this video already I took out an ABS drain from underneath this cabinet right here the code here is though you're supposed to be putting in brass copper or if you're gonna put in some sort of plastic pipe it has to be like a fire rated type of plastic pipe essentially ABS is not up to code inside this building right here. So I'm actually gonna convert everything to brass and copper. So it's gonna be a little bit longer because you're gonna have to do a little bit of soldering. The great thing about ABS, of course, is that it's super fast. You can put something like that in in not too much time, but brass and copper is gonna take a little bit more time, but again, the good thing is, is God forbid, if there is a fire in here, there is gonna be much smoke being produced by these materials. That's the whole point of it. You don't want smoke to travel to your neighbors above or to your neighbors left and right and have that affect them and, and potentially be a lethal way of them trying to get out of the building. So I'm gonna go get all the materials that I need and then we're gonna continue doing some delicious plumbing.
uh, just finished the drain. I want to show you the end result and then I want to talk to you about a couple of details that I kind of, something I'm struggling with. Take a look. So you got your continuous waste, comes down into your P-trap, hits a clean out. This is a line clean out right here and then goes into the wall. Here's what I want to show you very briefly, okay? Let me see if I can zoom in for you all. You see how the solder is a little bit chunky? Well, I don't mind the chunkiness. So there's a process that we do in soldering, especially when we're doing drainage specifically called capping a pipe. What a cap is, is what you'll notice when you're soldering copper pipe and you're using 50-50 and it's horizontal and it's drainage, what you'll notice is it'll tend to crack, actually not take solder on the top portions of horizontal pipe. You don't really have this issue with vertical pipe, but horizontal pipe, you're gonna notice this. So there'll be a, an obvious gap where you were just soldering because what'll end up happening is the solder will run down to the bottom and it'll continue running down to the bottom and continue running down to the bottom. So we do this thing called capping. Capping is basically turning down the heat on your torch and continuing to feed the solder. Now, we use 50-50 on drains or we are allowed by code to use 50-50 on drains which means it's got 50% lead, 50% zinc. So as you're capping, as you turn down the heat and you continue feeding, you, can, you are basically building a barrier that is supposed to seal that gap in the top portion of the pipe. The only difficulty is, is that I'm using the map gas, as you can see over there. The map gas is really nice in tight situations. It's nice not to lug around a sea tank, but here's something that I gotta say. I actually really miss the sea tank, and I also really miss the B tank, because the torch tips and the regulators on those, you can get a really beautiful, fine flame on it which allows you to cap so much prettier than I just did right there. And it came out a bit chunky and that, you know, and I'm talking about very fine details right now, which really won't matter because at the end of the day, it just has to be watertight, right? But if I had my way with it, if I could change one thing when it came to plumbing, it's that I would somehow try to get a regulator that gives me the same flame that I can get on a C tank or a B tank than I can with this torch uh, with this map gas torch right here. So I think that just means I'm still in the market looking for a different type of regulators for the map gas right there. There might be something out there that actually can do it for me. Aside from that, I mean, again, this is a nitpicky kind of conversation right here, but it's just something over seven, almost eight years of plumbing that I've just come to enjoy more. I really enjoy the flame on a B tank or a C tank. And then in regards to a map gas, I love map gas because it's not heavy. You could take it anywhere. You could go inside the cabinet with it. I mean, it's super versatile. So that's why I carry that bad boy with me. And that's why I also have the B tank in the truck in case it gets real and I gotta do large diameter pipe, for example. So let's go on to the next phase, which is testing and see how it goes. Alrighty, moment of truth, let's go. Beautiful. Alrighty, peeps, that is a kitchen sink literally from the beginning to the end. I know a lot of plumbers don't typically install the sink themselves. Usually that's something that the general contractor does and then we just come in and go ahead and install the pipes the way we need to, the way we train to in our careers. Over the years, I've been asked many times to actually do this kind of work. So I figured if you ever are gonna be doing it yourself, now you know, now you have a reference as to how it's done, how I do it. You know, you gotta make sure you have that template ready. You gotta make sure that you measure to the correct size and that you center it correctly and that everything else should fall into place. So peeps, thank you for watching. Do me a favor, if you haven't already, hit the subscribe button down below. Hit that bell notification if you can. Smash that thumbs up button and I'll see you plumbers very soon. Kenny Molotov, guys. Peace, baby.